Hello and welcome to Reaching Dream Fulfillment. In this video, I'll be more of a second part of my special education video. I'm going to actually it'll be different than this, but similar. I'm going to be giving a qualifying speech to become a paid speaker, second attempt coming soon. So I'm kind of practicing a little bit. I really haven't memorized this stuff, but having to do a special education, that'll be the topic that I am trying to become a paid speaker with. And we'll see how it goes. Anyways, uh, if you are not familiar with my <clears throat> yeah, disabilities or whatever they were, whatever you want to call them, that I had or kind of have or whatever, see my first video. But on the first topic I'm talking about is coping mechanisms. So if you are currently in special ed or have different learning disabilities and you're older, it's good to have coping mechanisms. There's a way to fight the whatever you have and reach your full potential by coming up with techniques. I had a severe direction problem, so it was so bad at one time. I was a little kid, I couldn't even find my way out of my friend's house. As odd as this may seem at the age of five. So with a bad direction problem, that's not as much of an issue now because there is GPS. But, you know, if I do not take certain measures, I could have a problem when I'm trying to find a certain place in a certain place. Like you're going to a big building in the, or a big campus or a college and you got to find your way around. Um, it is good to use some of these techniques. Number one that I use with my direction problem is I leave early. I allow myself time to get lost, time to screw up and get lost. So I am never nervous. And if I'm nervous that, and I'm pressed for time, then the, my direction problem will get even worse because I need to be nice and calm. And another technique is if I'm going somewhere, it's a huge, huge parking lot. I park way in the back of the parking lot. And just remember I'm way far away. Or what I need to start doing is using technology and actually taking a picture of where I parked my car. And if I do so, I can avoid getting lost later on. And when I was a kid, my mother would take me to the school I was gonna attend. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'd have the schedule and I'd have to take my mom to all my classes. She'd reverse the order and say, now take me to my, your Spanish class. Now take me to your math class. Now take me to your economics class, whatever. So there are mechanisms, coping mechanisms you can use. I also had a hard time when I was a kid writing my full name because of my spatial problem on a sheet of paper. So I had to allow more room and not be in a hurry and do it right away, not write my name at the last minute. So that's another thing. So some ideas that will be shared in my speech about special ed to improve the situation is A, I recommend for special education students that are mainstream to have one period, that's right, one period where they get to work on all their subjects and they can get help and not in a large classroom environment. In an environment where there's not a lot of uh, students and it's quiet and there's a couple of teachers that can help one-on-one. -on -one. This should be six period at the end of the day. Maybe even take a PE class out or something of that nature. The six period would be good because then all the subjects were used and then they can get help with any subject. Also, there still, unfortunately, is too much bullying when it comes to special education students. So there should be assemblies that are just about that. 
in school. They do have, already have bullying assemblies. They could have one towards special education students uh, as a subject or part of the assembly because they, people who have disabilities, they cannot help it and it should be understood and talk about the types of disabilities and so people can understand um, how life can be difficult for them, but they can achieve great things and talk about people who had disabilities, like Helen Keller, who is blind, who could not see, well, I just said blind, hear, or, and the only thing she could learn by was touch, through touch. And she achieved great things. Look up Helen Keller as an inspiration. Also, we can have visitors once or twice a week that would come to the special education class that ha are not just teachers who learned about these disabilities. No, these are people who have these disabilities. May it be autism, may it be Asperger's syndrome, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And talk to the class and talk to students that have the same exact disability teach them coping mechanisms and show them, hey, just because you have blank or blank label doesn't mean that you can't become this occupation, that occupation, or any occupation you so choose. So the visitors will talk about what they achieved. And also there should be some of these, those who do have these disabilities and we're in the special education program, talk to the special education teachers, talk to the special education program, and talk to administrators, vice principals, so they all can become familiar. Instead of just reading about these things or listening to these things, have somebody that actually has these certain disabilities talk about what could be done. Because those who understand of those who experience something. Just like veterans that fight in war. You can read about it all day, all night, watch movies about it, but unless you're actually in a war, you will never fully understand what the war experience is. If you're curious about what the war experience is, look at my Iraq War Veteran interview that I did a long time ago. Look it up, Iraq War video. And you will learn certain things that I did that I could never have learned unless I interviewed somebody like that. But I will fully never understand it unless I'm living a war. And I hope I'm not, because you never know. But nevertheless, special education can be improved. I went through experience, so due to that, it's nice sometimes to look at improvement. Though I was only in it only for a year, I did learn some valuable lessons from it. But nevertheless, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, also, ring on, click on the um, bell for notifications and look down in the description right here. And in the description, you will find my life coaching program, the 50 points of life and the most successful entrepreneurs, the habits, learn the habits of them and actually execute and use them. Cause you can learn, 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 but if you don't use what you learn and apply it, it will leave your memory and you will not reap whatever benefits can come out of them. Be a doer, not just a reader or a say. I'm saying I'm going to do this. I say I'm going to make YouTube videos. Okay. And then I took the say, took action, had somebody set it up and started filming. Once I was trained in it, but there's so much more I can do to do better with the YouTube videos and everything else. It's a process. But with time, 
you get the right resources, find the right people, and surround yourself with the right people, should I say, to help you get to where you want to go. Because nobody, but nobody, but nobody, even if it's the most successful people, did it alone. They created a team, and maybe one of the reasons they succeeded is they're better at picking that team than anyone else, or many other people, should I say. Not necessarily anybody else. All right, thank you. This is the end of five videos. Whew, I'm tired. No, I'm not. Now I have to download them and hope for the best and hope everything is well with you and you do what you're trying to do, have a mission, have a purpose, serve that purpose. And if the purpose drives you enough, you'll get some results after a long